Hey everybody, welcome to the April compilation video. For the new folks to the channel, we do this at the top of every month where we look at the expected releases for and reissues and things like that uh, for the given month. Now this is a little odd, being April of 2018, uh, so date it in case anybody's watching this you know, 10 years from now. Uh, this is a this is a historical episode, right? Uh, mainly because in the context of April of 2018, uh, the entire existence of the domestic side of the hobby, uh, for the most part, has shifted. Uh, Mobius has been sold to Pegasus, and Ravel's uh, future, even at this recording, is uncertain. Uh, you know, you know cu current, uh, you know, going forward as usual is round two, and oddly enough, they have no kits coming out this month uh, of any genre. It's, it's very odd. I, it may have been a whole, you know, like a shipping issue. You know, maybe the container didn't get here in time. Uh, they were supposed to have two kits for this month, and if they do put them into the release, uh, you know, mix, as it were, we will come back and address those during the weekly show. Uh, it was going to be um, the 1970 Corvette uh, ZR1 LT1, which is a 1990s era, uh, you know, AMT kit, and then also a uh, reissue of the uh, Toyota, um, I'm trying to think of what technically that Toyota is called. I, it, I'm not sure if that was still just when the Toyota pickup was called a Toyota pickup before it was called a Tacoma, I think. But it's a 1992, uh, the 120th scale kit that Lindbergh did, which of course we've talked about a number of times, where uh, AMT is putting all of those Craft House 1990 era Lindbergh good kits underneath the AMT name, if nothing else, just to get them away from the historically awful Lindbergh Pyro IMC Palmer stuff that, you know, Lindbergh has in its sort of historic kit collection that you should run away from and avoid at all costs unless you enjoy fighting with things and correcting things. And I know that's some people's gag, so I don't, not knocking it, just not mine. Uh, so, like I said, if those officially are put back into a release list, uh, we'll let you know. But right now, they are not. Uh, of course, Ravel, uh, with its issues revolving around the Habako uh, bankruptcy proceedings, uh, has not as of yet announced any April kits. Again, if they do, we'll come back to it. Uh, the March kits were not released uh, in the sense of on time. Uh, it does look like the uh, Impala is a April release now, and then the 53 Bel Air may be a May release, with a lot of everything else being pent up into June. Uh, in July, it really depends again on what happens in the next couple of uh, weeks regarding the sale of it. Now we're going to take uh, the regular Monday show and address everything that's happened with the Habako situation as far as what parts have been sold, what parts haven't been sold. Uh, you know, in that show, I don't want to clog this up with it, but uh, you know, as of press right now, uh, Ravel is still just stuck in a tangle of legal proceedings and is not uh, owned by at this point anybody. So. Uh, we'll see how that works out. So that means that all of the, the uh, releases for the month of April are overseas releases. Uh, they're all you know Japanese. There are no actual uh, European releases this month. Now, the Opal Manta kits, the Bell Kit Rally kits, those are out in Europe. They're not uh, out in a global distribution as of yet. But if you go through like Spot Model, which I use, of course, uh, they're in Spain. Uh, as well as other European vendors, you go on eBay, there's a bunch of them on eBay. They are available if you want to pay, you know, for that, uh, gotta have it right now, uh, release price. Spot Model was charging uh, close to uh, $62 for them with the conversion. Our, the Euro-Dollar thing is really bad compared to even the Euro, uh, compared to the Dollar-Yen, even though that has, you know, obviously not a really great place right now either. But comparatively speaking, it's a, at least it's at least a good exchange rate where we get money. We get more for our money than, than they do. You know, the euro is is a they get there's you know if they if, if a European buys something in America and they're getting more for their money than we are if we buy something with our money in Europe. But be that as it may, uh, the price on those kits in the last couple of weeks has come down to like fifty seven. So there will seem whether or not that's an exchange rate issue or uh, mispricing when it came out. Or they've, you know, nobody bought them, and so they've dropped the price a little bit. I don't know, but 57, eh, it's still a little high, I guess. I'm just basing it on the fact that when the polos, uh, the 2015-2016 the polos came out, 
they were like 55, 50 to fifty-five dollars. Um, and you may say, well, those are reissues, and they were to a certain extent, but they have new bodies and things like that. I mean, it was a it was a fairly uh, robust retooling to make those newer uh, polo kits. But again, they weren't fresh scratch uh, kits, and I will probably pick up. At least one of each, maybe more than one of each. I'm just kind of looking at the liveries that are coming in, uh, you know, people, what the planned aftermarket uh, liveries are. And there's at least one or maybe two that interest me. Uh, it, it just really depends. I don't want to, I really don't want to start a giant, huge rally collection like I have in my GT3 Super GT collection where I have, you know, dozens of aftermarket liveries and, and huge stocks of, of you know, uh, blank kits to work with so i really don't want to start that with another genre of racing i already have enough of that between touring and uh, gt3 racing uh so you know it, it i'm going to get one of each just to have you know the the two box art liveries uh but there's at least one aftermarket livery that i kind of like so we'll see how that all goes uh, I don't like I said I don't object to the price. That is what it is. They are rally kits. There, it's a niche market. You know, and if you're going to pay for the tooling, you've got to charge what it's going to cost. And so I don't have an issue with that. But that would pretty much be your, you know, your your what you're looking at European wise. Um, you know, there's some Italy stuff that'll be floating around, but none of it's really interesting. Uh, you know, a lot of it's reissues and things like that. And none of the reissues that are, you know, cooking in the spring are even automotive. There's some European truck stuff, but that's a little out of the genre what we cover here. So anyway, let's take a look at what we're expecting uh, from overseas. And even that's not a very big list, right? Like this is, this was March. It was all the whole notebook. And then May is the same way where it's a whole notebook. That other page is June and we're still working on that as far as releases. Um, like there's no uh, Hasegawa June releases yet. So we'll see. All right. So over it sees uh, Tamiya for the month of April will be reissuing the 112 scale uh, Cat Caterham uh, Super 7 BDR kit. Uh, that was something that was announced uh, over at Nuremberg. So that is now on the official release slate. Uh, no going in, at least from the pre-orders I've seen on this. This is going to run you about three three hundred fifty dollars from Japan. More than that elsewhere. Uh, so you know, if you want one of these, uh, the buy-in is a little steep. However, it's about fifty percent less than the price of them on eBay, where they were going for like eight hundred to a thousand dollars. So expensive, yes, not as expensive as they were selling for. So. You know, it's a balance act, right? If you want one bad enough and you were almost willing to pay $800 for one, well, $400 is like a discount, right? It's 100% less. Uh, Fujimi has got three kits on the release uh, slate for April, and they are a uh, Lamborghini Countach 400. LP400, that is going to be the curbside version of that kit. You may recall, that, of course, the Enthusiast Series was released back in February. That has a Circuit Wolf uh, Circuit No Nami tie-in uh, for a specific car. They have done uh, a Lamborghini Countach uh, Circuit Wolf car in the past, about well, probably two years ago now. Uh, but this is a different uh, car from a different part of the Circuit Wolf uh, uh, universe, if you will. And then they're going to reissue their uh, McLaren F1 Street car, and that will be uh, with a tie-in to the Circuit Wolf 2, which of course is a reboot in the 1990s. So. Uh, there's those. And then the last thing is going to be what they're calling the Toyota Mark II set. This is like the successive Skyline set, or it was three kits. This is going to be a GX61, GX71, and GX81 Toyota Mark II. That'll build you three different kits all in one box. So it's not like you got to pick one, obviously. Three different kits from three different boxes. I believe the GX71 is going to be the high mecha version. At least that's what they're showing. The high mecha version is the one with the engine in it. Uh, and that'll let you build any... Toyota Mark II from basically the early 1980s through the early 1990s. Those cars are on like about a five-year uh, or so refresh cycle, so you get the tail end of the GX61, the GX71 generation, and the beginning of the GX81 uh, generation with those three. Uh, over Hasegawa, they're going to be reissuing the Subaru Impreza Sports Wagon. Uh, that is the sister kit, if you will, to the Impreza sedan that they uh, reissued last month. Uh, they're going to reissue the Bennington B190 F1 car in 124th scale. So another one of those 124th scale F1 cars. Uh, this is on here because, we, so we mentioned, we don't really do figures here, but I mentioned these only because they sort of go with these uh, 
F1 cars have been reissuing. That is a 124 scale F1 drivers figure set. Uh, it includes at least two figures from the looks of it. I have not seen the inside of the, one of these because why would I have a set of them? But uh, it, it appears to be two separate figures, at least one that is standing, uh, you know, just hanging out, and one that is helmeted and in a seated position to be, you know, in the car. They are going to reissue their Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 6. Their uh, Volkswagen Beetle with a new Moon Eyes livery tie-in. Uh, reissue another one of their Porsche 962 C kits, this time with the Shell uh, World Sports Car Championship livery. Uh, reissue of the Jaguar XJS TWR uh, streetcar version. The TWR, as you may recall, is a racing Jaguar, but they also made a street version of that kit. Uh, that is a kit that has not been out of Hasegawa since 2002, so that is a long ago, far away reissue. And then they're also going to reissue the uh, Landmark Object T uh, Japanese Touring Car Championship AE 101 Toyota Corolla, which is a fantastic reissue as far as I'm concerned, because those kits uh, are like the Civic JTCC cars, where they are ridiculous expensive on eBay. Uh, for whatever reason, I mean, all the kits are effectively the same. The only thing is some of them have some slightly different wheels uh, in them and the liveries. Uh, and even buying an old one, if you can find one at a decent price, then you have to worry about, like, the sketch decals that are, you know, 10, 15 years old at this point. So great to have that back out with uh, fresh livery. And then lastly, over at Aoshima in the model car lineup, they're going to reissue their 120 scale Honda Step Van kit. That has uh, two sets of wheels, uh, the roof rack, the surfboards. It's got all of the uh, tie-in parts that kit has had over the years. They're going to uh, reissue their Volkswagen Beetle 1303S Cabrio. That's the old IMA tooling. Also the 1303S uh, Coupe, or I guess technically speaking in German parlance, is a limousine. Uh, that kit was supposed to be a March reissue. It's been held over to April. Uh, they're also going to reissue their... Uh, uh, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo X Final, uh, that is going to just be a straight uh, reissue, I guess, uh, or it's being packaged into the model car lineup, but I think it already is, so it must just be a reissue that's in the wrong place in this list. And also a re reissue of their 1996 Honda Accord Wagon uh, SIR, which of course is a just a trim level in Japan uh, that we did not get here, but that's just kind of an interesting kit uh, if you have an interest in uh, you know Japanese cars. Because there are so few station wagons made uh, here in the United States, obviously, of, of domestic cars. Well, there's a, a lot of station wagons, when you start digging around and looking, that were made uh, in Japan of Japanese vehicles. So uh, there, there was a point in time, I think, that this kit had a Satco resin dashboard in it, if you can find an old one. Um, but the new one is a, uh, a right-hand drive Japanese only. So keep that in mind. Uh, on the model car side of things, they are going to uh, reissue the uh, Volk version of the Toyota Rocket Buddy 86. That's just a straight fact. That's just a straight restock reissue. Uh, also, a reissue of the Lancer Evo X Rally Art. Um, that is a longer uh, reissue. That has never been reissued in the new boxing series. That kit is significant because it is the only. Uh, Evo 10 that comes with a left-hand drive dashboard. Um, so, you know, that may interest you if you're kind of on the fence about what you're looking for in, a, in an Evo 10. Uh, this one is, you know, like an export spec. And then they're going to reissue their uh, Daihatsu Copen Pandora A87 Evo 2. This is one of those kits that I always enjoy because it's like, let's take a relatively mundane K car. Uh, you know, it's part of the ABCs of the uh, the the whole uh, little roadsters that went on, the Suzuki Cappuccino, the Daihatsu, the uh, Honda Beat, the Daihatsu Copen, and, and all that. Daihatsu Copen came a little after the actual ABC's uh, kits, but it's of that genre where it was a two-seat roadster. Uh, and now uh, this is like a really over-the-top, uh, you know, tuner version of it. And so uh, that is one of those kits that I've always wanted to get, and I never bought one for whatever reason, so having it reissued at the, you know, regular price is fantastic as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and then you have two 14-inch wheel sets, which are the Focus Racing and the uh, eight-spoke Watanabe uh, style uh, wheels. Uh, those are just reissues. Reissue of the Pangani Detail Upset, 
which uh, I think just got released again. It seems like, and maybe it was the Avengor stuff that got released. It seems like it seems like those detail upsets get spit out uh, almost every other month. Uh, they're going to reissue the 1983-84, which are the early versions. Uh, uh, Toyota Tr 86 Truno, which uh, is the one with the composite headlights. The Levin is the one with the flip-up headlights. And those are going to be pre-painted kits. They're going to be uh, Red Panda, White Panda, which is, of course, the red car with the black trim and the white car with the black trim. Uh, Straight-up reissue of the Liberty Walk uh, GTR version 1. That is the R35, the more modern kit, the one they just did a few months ago. It's out of stock in a lot of places. And Ao Oshima is out of them, so they're doing another run. Uh, reissue of the Nissan Skyline, Ken and Mary num number 73 uh, Liberty Walk kit. That is, of course, the uh, inspired by a race car uh, <laughs> car. Uh, you know, it, The number 73 car was a legitimate Japanese Grand Prix car, famous one. And uh, Liberty Walk did sort of a, their version of it with the over fenders and, and all that. So that's what that kit is. Uh, they're going to reissue the Toyota Hilux double cab lift up, which is the uh, jacked up monster truck style uh, Hilux. And then a uh, reissue of the Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3 14 inch wheels, which are, again, I'm not sure what wheel company those are supposed to represent, but uh, those are just, again, reissues. So they're, uh, you know, nothing you guys haven't seen before. And if you pay attention, uh, you already know what those look like. Uh, on this list of things, I have on my pre my uh, pre order slate the Mark II set. Uh, I I need a sixty one and an eighty one. I already have a seventy one. If the seventy one is the exact same seventy one kit that I already have, I may either uh, throw it up as a giveaway or just straight up sell it. Um, we'll let you know when that comes in because chances are that will actually be in my you know realm here until May. Uh, even if I do ship out every month. Uh, I really only have, like I said, a few things in April at the stands, so unless Studio 27 does some crazy amount of decals. Uh, I'm not sure I'll actually ship at the end of April. Uh, and then I have the Jaguar TWR car on uh, pre-order, because that's the last of the Jaguar civilian kits that I need for my, you know, collection. Uh, and then I have the JTCC Toyota Corolla on pre-order. You shouldn't even have to have me tell you that. And then I have that Pangani, or that Pangani, but the uh, Pandora Copen on uh, pre-order as well because again uh, just a, a cool uh conversation piece car if nothing else and i have uh, pretty much all of the other copen street cars uh that are you know relatively normal trim cars that i want there were um i think three pandora kits all together they're different like trim levels there's an evo one an evo two and there's one other one that's floating around like i can't think of i'd have to go look up uh you know, Dot House of Copen kits, but there were three of those tuner cars done, and I think the Pandora Evo 2 was the most, uh, like I said, over the top version of the three. So, uh, just a, you know, a, a quiet little month, not a whole heck of a lot going on. Uh, you know, part of it partially, uh, you know, circumstantial, partially just because I think April's a slow month uh, every year. If you, if you like, literally legitimately went through that uh, notebook, April has always been a short month. So, uh, whether that's Japanese, or not Japanese, but uh, whether that's Chinese New Year coming into effect, you know, everything being closed in February, uh, I don't know. But it is, it is what it is, and, and, and nothing else will give you a chance to sort of sigh, take a breath, and catch up on uh, on everything from the end of last year and the beginning of this year, if you're in that position. Uh, so, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys on the other side.